working with Python at NURSE. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Conda modules, our NURSE Python module, how you can create environments and installing packages, as well as parallel Python at, on, at NURSE on Perlmutter as well. So to get started, so using Python at NURSE, um, so let's see if I can do my little poll. So let's do a little poll really quickly, if I can find it. So how many, um, let's launch this one. What uh, languages do most of our users most proficient at using? Okay, so Python is taking the lead with C++ being a second. And so what programming languages will you be using on your work at NURSE? And again, we have Python 82%, a little bit of a spread off of the usual scientific suspects of Fortran, C++, and C. Okay, awesome. Any languages that were not listed? Share these results. All right. So getting started with Python at NURSE, uh, my strength and my background is mainly in languages like uh, Fortran and C and C++. My background is performance modeling and op optimization of scientific applications. So I'm used to dealing with uh, researchers and helping them to figure out how they can make their application or simulation run faster on a HPC system. So Python has emerged as one of the most prominent languages that our community of users are using at NURSE. And we do have a lot of very useful documentation to help you get started and up and running on using Python on Perlmutter or our systems at NURSE. And we do these basically based off of our modules that we have available. By default, when you log into uh, Perlmutter and you you'll mod Python will load and our default version now is 3.11. And once you just enter module load Python and enter the Python command, it'll give you all of the details about how you can, the current version and whatnot. And this is just a simple command showing you how you can execute it on Perlmutter in a terminal or in a Jupyter notebook. And so speaking of Conda, we use Conda at NURSE in order to help us install our custom environments for you and your scientific applications while you're working with um, Python or other applications. And that can simply be accessed by module load Conda. So the Conda environments are, they're great for creating our isolated and reproducible software environments. And so it makes for managing your packages and installing and resolving any dependencies that you may have in your applications much, much more easier and much more efficient. Um, uh, typically with a lot of the tickets that I see when it's a problem with a Python application, most of the time the user isn't using a Conda environment and they have some type of library dependency issues. So that's why we do recommend um, setting up a Conda environment so that you can contain your your dependencies and libraries and not have any interferences when you're trying to uh, compile in um, your applications. So Lippy and I are science engagement engineers, but we also serve as uh, HPC consultants and regularly have our consulting shifts. So we kind of see some of the, the common themes and problems that occur when we have user errors and issues that come up and what Python not using Conda is one of them. Um, so with the NURSE Python module, you can you, once you've loaded it, um, we have a number of different um, packages and that are available for you to use in with your Python with your Python applications. Um, 
once you have loaded Python and you do a conda list, it's going to list out all of the available software packages um, that can be used within your environment. Um, this is, of course, just an abbreviated listing showing some of the most common ones that are available, again, um, matplotlib, um, numpy, scipy, et cetera, for you to use. But if you do a conda list, it's going to give you a exhaustive list of different um, packages that you would be able to install. And so how do you create uh, a custom conda environment, you say? Well, we can easily just do that. And, um, and as Lippy mentioned in our documentation, we have a, a lot of detailed examples showing you how to customize and create the different conda environments that you can need. You can specify the packages and libraries that you'll need to use as well. So you can easily do that with these simple commands, you module load conda, and then you just do a conda create. Um, you're gonna name it whatever you want that uh, environment to be. So in this case, I've just named it my environment. And we specify the version of the Python we want. And then we also specify any additional libraries and things that we want to include. And then we can just activate our environment and we are good to go. Now, with it at Nurse, we have a number of different ways that you can also use um, Python. And so with Conda and other containerized environments are available as well, such as Shifter for you to use too. Um, those are going to be the probably the safest ways that we recommend using Python and uh, for, for you to have a contained and safe environment for, app, for your simulations and executions. And we have a number of different trainings that we do offer that are more detailed that go into examples of how you can um, use shifters. So we have a a very detailed shifter training and spin training as well for you to go through. So what are some tips for package installations um, on, on Perlmutter at Nurse? So again, we recommend you install it via Conda or PIP. And so most packages can come via Conda from different channels. And so you're able to do uh, see what specific channels are available by just doing the dash C defaults uh, or dash C conda forge. And so this can also allow for you to check which in which packages are installed as well by doing a conda list. So some packages can be compiled like wrappers, and this can be like MPI 4Py for parallel Python execution as well. And then we also have our CUDA toolkit that's available as a module or, L, or else as a conda package for uh, GPU enabled uh, Python and uh, parallelization as well. So by default, uh, with conda forge is gonna install a CUDA toolkit for you in your conda environment. So if you have a, another existing uh, CUDA toolkit module, this might be, um, might conflict with it and override. Okay. And so on uh, Perlmutter, we do a lot, we do have access for MPI 4Py, and that basically provides users with a uh, interface for doing MPI on your Python applications. So you can do multi-node simulations and calculations, uh, as well as hybrid with uh, within the CUDA as well as Python as MPI as well. So MPI 4Py is already loaded when you do a module load Python. Within CUDA, we have MPI support using Cray and Pitch uh, for, for, our, for our system. So if you want to install MPI 4Py with CUDA support, we outline a number of different steps that you can do to get that going. Simply, you can enter these commands, uh, module load programming environment dash GNU, the CUDA toolkit, and then you can specify other specific uh, modules and libraries that you want to load um, as well. And then you have your conda create command that will specify appropriate components and conda activate. And then from there, you are able to uh, do a pip install for appropriate packages like MPI 4Py. So uh, one caveat that we do want for you to be aware of as you get started is, is that 
um, with the CUDA aware MPI 4PI, you must have that CUDA toolkit loaded, even if the code does not make use of GPUs. That's a uh, NVIDIA constraint that we can't over overcome. So a lot of uh, a lot of the intricacies that come with us being able to with being able to use some of these packages are based off of the limitations on our vendor, which in this case is NVIDIA. And so some of their custom kernels we are not able to override. Okay. Another way for you to manage your packages is to make use of PIP. And so with PIP, it allows for us to um, allows for you to use a local uh, package cache for you can for maintenance. So uh, there are different packages that you're used, but you you're not necessarily confined to a specific environment. So you're able to also use uh, pip to install specific packages that you would like to use as well. Um, some best package pa practices for uh, using pip. Um, install packages inside of that conda environment, not outside. So, you know, don't, you know, don't use pip install outside of your conda environment. Um, and you want to make sure that you, if you're going to install a package, you want to do a, a reinstall of it to force it to override an existing package. So that's one thing that you want to keep in mind. Okay. And can't necessarily see the chat. Did we have any questions? Nope, you're good. Okay, all right. Okay, and so running Python at scale at Nurse, um, you know, once you, if you are looking to to do a significant job that is going to run across uh, various nodes. And uh, again, I, someone asked earlier about uh, a benchmarking or production run across the entire system. Um, so we avoid, we recommend to, we so when running those to minimize uh, exhausting the load on a system, we want you to make sure to use your container for that environment, um, use the dash P prefix option for creating that type of environment when you do your conda create. And we specifically want you to avoid using your home and your CFS when you are looking to run your Python application, okay? So some things to take into consideration um, when you are looking to do a uh, parallel Python, and let's see, did I have another? Question here, one second. How many, can we get a raise of hands of how many people plan to do uh, uh, cross node uh, MPI, cross node Python with MPI 4Py? You get a raise of hands maybe in your work. If you're going to be doing multi-node or just so we have one person okay so we will i'm pretty sure more others as well so it one thing that you want to consider when you are working on your parallel python applications is to make sure that you are not um forcing more resources than what are available. Um, and that's what we call um, oversubscription and due to indirect parallelism. So when you have NumPy and you're using OpenMP threading, NumPy uses OpenMP threading under the hood. And so what you wanna make sure is that the number of processes per node times those number of OpenMP thread, num threads does not exceed the number of CPU cores per node available. So it's a, a little bit of a, a trick with the, the way that Python will typically use the Linux command, the CPU count to determine what that worker size is. And that's going to be the default value, but that doesn't necessarily um, account for CPU binding. So what you wanna make sure is you want to be sure you specify the number of workers to use 
and ensure that you do not trust uh, the default. Um, that's also a common pitfall in um, structuring your applications in the grid size too. Okay, and so when using Python at NURSE, uh, let's go over the little summary of high level, you know, conda environments or containers should be used for you to create your customized uh, Python sandbox environments. Um, you can make use of our global common file system for better performance when you're running in parallel. Make sure that you use the appropriate provided compiler wrappers that are available, such as MPI4Py. Um, avoid running conda init uh, in your startup, your home, because it'll, for hardcore in installations, because it'll, you'll uh, exhaust your, your limit in your home directory. Um, uh, be careful using pip, avoid using our, the system Python, and make sure that you watch out for defaults, um, uh, when it comes to uh, oversubscription of resources uh, and make sure that you have a, a good understanding of specifying the number of threads versus the number of uh, tasks per node that you'll need to use. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's talk about using Python on GPUs at, on Perlmuter. So getting started um, with GPUs in Python, um, NumPy and SciPy don't utilize GPUs out of the box, but there are a number of number of different uh, Python GPU frameworks that we're able to use, such as uh, CuPy and Rapids. Um, these provide for appropriate replacements or wrappers that can use to make use of the libraries that are typically available in Python for GPU usage. So in general, with machine learning libraries um, for computing, we do support PyTorch, TensorFlow, and JAX. Um, you can also write your own GPU kernels as well um, using Numba and CUDA Python as well. Uh, we have different options for uh, multi-GPU and multi-node or distributed memory um, frameworks that you're able to use as well. And uh, many of these available libraries have adopted the CUDA array interface. And so that's what makes it easier for array-like objects to be stored within the GPU memory for you to access within the libraries and whatnot. Uh, so we have a, a very uh, extensive list of um, resources and environments that are available. Uh, tomorrow, you'll, you'll get a... a, a a more exhaustive overview of what is available as well as with some examples um, when we have our presentation on our programming environments and comp compilers. And so what you wanna make sure is understanding about the CUDA cool, to toolkit dependency um, via modules. So by default, the current version that we have is uh, for the CUDA cool kit. CUDA toolkit is 11.7. That's a, a little bit of a, a tunk with Twister, with Conda as well. Um, so you'll start with mod module load Conda, and then you'll have your, of course, Conda create for that environment. You can name it whatever you would like to name it, uh, include those wrappers. And then you can, we have appropriate documentation to show you how once you're in that, how you can uh, use PIP for installing different packages and whatnot as well. And so right here, you can click on that documentation for detailed steps and whatnot to go over. Tomorrow, we'll also have more hands-on uh, problems once we go through the, the running jobs for to, to demonstrate some of the functionality too. And so with CUPI, you want to make sure the package, it's going to pull the CUDA toolkit dependencies in the Conda, so you'll unload that uh, CUDA toolkit, and then you'll, and then once you'll reinstall that uh, using PIP as well, right? And, yeah. Now, a good question that um, a lot of our users that maybe are new to uh, HPC or to Nurse might have is understanding if your 
your application or your, your code is a good fit for migrating to a GPU. Um, sometimes uh, more parallelism does not yield better performance. It depends on the, the structure of your application. If you are using something that can be easily parallelized into smaller chunks to focus on high throughput and that low memory utilization, uh, then it's likely that you could be able to parallelize your, your application for GPUs um, to take advantage. But if you are in need of data movement with low latency, then it's probably going to be best for you to utilize uh, CPUs. Um, GPUs are a good fit if you're going to be performing um, computations using large arrays, you know, uh, matrix multiplications, working with images, uh, large data arrays. Um, if the data set can fit in our GPU memory, then it's likely going to yield, be a good fit. So with our A100 GPUs per node, the memory is 40 gigabyte. So if IO is not a bot is not a bottleneck, then likely your application would be a good um, fit for acceleration on GPUs use for on GPUs with Python. Okay. So some things that we want to make sure that we keep in mind, some be best practices when you're working with uh, utilizing Python, uh, make sure you utilize Conda. Uh, we have an a extensive list of documentation on using Python on Nurse, uh, setting up various environments, uh, using Jupyter, uh, which we will talk about tomorrow as well. Uh, within our docs, uh, the search is a, a great way for you to navigate and find specific topics. And as always, if you get stuck or you cannot figure out uh, a, a way forward, please make sure you reach out for assistance by submitting a ticket. And also be sure to make use of some of the previous training that we do have available. Um, a lot of that will walk through a number of setting up a number of different environments and things that will familiarize you with using uh, Perlmutter as well. All right. So that ends our um, using Python at NURSE segment.